Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Fridays with Feidelman. I'm Cheryl Feidelman, life coach, trauma healer, and writer. And today's topic on Fridays with Feidelman is the I in identity. What I want to look at when it comes to identity uh, is, is the amount of identities that each one of us has. If we were really to dissect our experience and the many, many layers of identity that we have and the different sides of ourselves that we show to different people depending on the context, depending on who the people are, depending on the group of people are, um, how much of us we want to expose or not expose, um, how much self-expression we have, in the paradigm, for example, you have a job and you have a particular um, languaging in that job. There's things you can say. There's things you can't say. There's a hier hierarchy. Everybody has their level, their set level of self-expression uh, in in the job. Everybody has their set level or um, channel. Uh, you know, on the uh, like if it was like a um, TV channel. I don't know if that's too abstract, but everybody has their set sort of lane that they sit in in their family, uh, their role uh, with your lover, your partner, or in dating, there's a particular role that, that we all play. So how many different identities do we have? And then, and not just, uh, not just in each category, but there's like a million different subcategories, right? You show up to the coffee shop and get it with the person you are being when you ask for that cup of coffee. Um, so, you know, it's contextual, right? It's the different sides of ourselves and the different roles that we play in the different kind of configurations of our lives, home, work, family, love life, and social life, and so on. So there's all those identities. And then there's the identity that we sit in. And I'm going to say and suggest there's a million different identities that we just sit in. And what I mean by sitting in is I mean your culture, where you were born, the type of family you were, you were brought up in. You know, you may identify more with the type of socioeconomic class that you were raised in, or you may be, have rebelled against that and you're now in some other socioeconomic class. So your identity is either aligned with your childhood uh, socioeconomic class, or it's chosen something else uh, in opposition. So uh, that may sound like really abstract, but I'm throwing a lot of ideas right out right now because I'm doing a masterclass on identity in my Facebook group on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So this is kind of an overview, overview of it, but I'll go further into what I just said um, on the Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and then there's, you know, there's our the gender that we identify as. There's the gender we identify as, and we have our sexual identity, and then we have how we were raised inside of that gender and that sexuality and how we relate to um, the sex that we're attracted to, who we become when there's attraction, there's that identity. There's who we sit in in our body, right? So there is your um, the way you relate to your body, the way you relate to your size, right? Whether you're happy with your weight or you're not happy with your weight or you feel attractive or you don't feel attractive, that is also informing how we're being with people and our identity. And what I spoke about, well, I spoke about this in the, in the Money Masterclass last week. I'm doing a masterclass every week. Uh, in the Facebook group live, uh, as long as this quarantine lasts. Um, so I spoke about how we, how our super ego provides us with our experience. And this has a ton to do with identity because our super ego, um, distinct from our ego, our super ego is that which has us live in comparison. So at some point when our psychology was formulating, when we were much, much younger, our psychology, our nervous system, our somatics, our uh, cognitive world, it was all sort of formulating and gelling. There was at one point where our um, uh, reticular activating system, uh, I'm getting too complicated, uh, started to develop our beliefs. And our beliefs started telling us, and this is our superego, 
okay? Our superego is wrapped around our beliefs. Our beliefs start going, oh, I'm distinct from you. We're not gelled together. We're not one. This family, these people that I see around us, there's actually a me and there's a you. And then we start going, oh, well, what distinguishes me from you? And now comparison is born. And our superego has us live in comparison, go, oh, that makes you you and this makes me me. Does that mean I should be more like you or you should be more like me? Does that mean, like, where, where do I begin and you end and where do you begin and you end? Thus, comparison is born. Thus, identity starts to be born. And the shift in identity, the fickleness in our identity, has a, has a lot to do with our level of codependence, um, which is, okay, I'm willing to shift my identity to survive this situation, shift the, or my identity that way to survive that situation, shift my identity this way to survive that situation. And then you have so many different people in your life that know different sides of you. Um, there's a beauty to that. But if we're going to look at it from the lens of codependence, which is my work, um, there is, it's, it's a survival mode rather than an inner, rather than coming from inner peace and sovereignty, whereas that would mean there's nothing to actually survive in any situation where there's a person or more than a person or, or one person or more. And then we throw in the notion of culture. Okay, so we have identity, we have our, all of our social identities, and then we have our physical identities, how we feel in our body, who we think we are, as opposed to who we occur as, often very much a dissonance there that is, is hard to fill, right? People talk to you and you're like, why are they talking to me like that? I'm not the person that they're talking to. It doesn't even seem like they know who I am because the things that they're saying have nothing to do with who I am. How did that happen? Did it come from the way I was being? Does it come from their perception? You know that 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 whole thing I'm going to go to go into as well uh, in the master class. But the other thing that I wanted to get to was culture. Um, how much culture, your ethnicity, where you come from, your lineage, how much our religion, how much we identify or don't identify, uh, the, you know, certain uh, pride that we have in the color of our skin or the tribe we came from. Um, and then there becomes like an isness, right? Like my people are this way and your people are that way. Jewish people are like this or black people are like this or Chinese people are like that. And then there's the outside judgment of, of okay, those people are like that. And then there's the inside judgment of, yeah, yes, my, my, my people are like this. And so this is how I need to be because this is how my people are. So we start to have our... And this is for some people, not everybody, but we start to have our identity so informed by our culture because there's a loyalty to that culture, consciously or unconsciously. And I spoke several weeks about weeks ago about our unconscious loyalty to context, about how adaptable we are, first of all. And second of all, we were born, let's say we're born into a particular religion, what falls into our lap is some sort of loyalty to the context of that religion. You become loyal to that identity. And then when we look at trauma healing, codependence healing, we all have to start letting go of that which we've identified with for so long. The different parts of ourselves that we thought were, were us. And when we start to release all these different identities that actually weren't our true nature, but they were filled with unconscious belief systems, filled with ways in which we, ways that we made up, that our nervous system made up, that our superego made up, ways of being that we made up, that we had to be that way in order to be accepted, in order to belong, um, in order to not go against the grain of our family or our culture or our tribe. So, you know, and it's interesting because we want to be, we're, we're, we're pack animals. 
So we want to own a particular identity so that we can stick with our people. But the kind of identities that we create in order to stick with people are also are, are often just um, survival techniques. And also when it comes to codependence, it's you know for a codependent, we tend to think the way that I'm being and who I'm being is because of somebody else. I'm being this way because of them. I'm showing certain parts of myself in this situation. I'm magnifying some, I'm disappearing others because of them. Because those are the only sides of me that either they wanna see, or those are the only sides of me that I feel safe to expose in this situation because my safety depends on the other person. You know, there's the um, good old uh, basic existential question, who am I? I think it's a fascinating question. Um, I'm not even sure I can answer that for myself because I feel like if I were to answer who am I, then the I is one thing. I, I, don't, I could probably take days and days and days to answer that question because I am many different people plus I'm continually moving, changing, shifting. And there's parts of me that are static. So, you know, uh, it's, and I'm continually building the observer, the part of me that's going, ooh, ooh, I don't think that's actually me. I think that's my programming. I think that's some unhealed childhood trauma. I have, I have a camera going, all right, of all these people and identities that I have, let's keep putting the flashlight on the ones that are not real, true expressions of me, but they're a survival mechanism. They're not real, true expressions of me. They're my super ego going, how can I survive here by figuring out if I'm inferior or superior in this situation? How can I survive here if I just like people please the situation and take care of the other person so that they're happy? Right? So I'm constantly trying to heal and eliminate those identities that come up and pop up that are not me, that they're just, that they're survival techniques that at one point I thought they were me. I thought I was just being really nice or I was just being really loving or really caring. Um, Or I was playing a role that I thought that I should play in a relationship and I thought I was doing a good job, right? One of my identities was like being the good person or being the good girl. And I kept looking for validation and also looking to prove that I'm playing the identity I should be playing here. Look, I'm doing good. Meanwhile, doing good was my way of surviving a situation that I probably shouldn't have been in anyway. So I'm going to, in the masterclass on Monday, we have our masterclasses Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the Trauma to Truth uh, Facebook group. They're live, uh, 12 noon Pacific. If you can't make it, the recordings are, are in the timeline. Uh, so this will be Trauma to Truth Masterclass Part 6 on identity. Last week was on money. Um, all the previous master classes are still in the timeline, so you can watch the recordings. Um, they were really great, lots of great participation. And on Monday, uh, next week, I'm really going to go into all the different layers of identity that we have when it comes to our physicality, when it comes to our culture, when it comes to um, our thoughts, uh, beliefs, and opinions, when it comes to our family. Where are we inside of all the different identities? When one says, this is who I am, this is me, who is that? Who do you think you are? And I put out a Fridays with Vitalin video a couple months ago about who do you think you are? Like really, it's a real, not a rhetorical question. Like it's an actual question, who do you think you are? And where are you in the spectrum of identities um, that you are, uh, that, that make you up? And what are the identities that make you up? Um, and is there an awareness 
how often those identities shift considering the context, paradigm, and people that you're around. Um, so, and what we want to do on our healing journey and in my trauma healing work is consistently and continually start bringing our identities that we play, the roles that we play that are inside of our survival mode, bring them into our consciousness and go, oh, okay, <laughs> that person that just showed up, the me that showed up, that was survival. That was uh, the me that was trained by my trauma. That wasn't the true me. All right, everybody, happy Friday. Have an awesome weekend. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, uh, please like or comment. Please email me. Even if you want to email me a list of all of your identities, that would be so fascinating to me, and I would love to connect with you about that. Um, and um, uh, what else? Okay, the link to the Facebook group is below here if you want to join us. They're free. Join us for the master classes. Uh, have an awesome weekend. Happy healing. Life is now. And you are awesome. Bye. All right. One more thought that we're going we're gonna to go into a little bit more in the master class on Monday, which is number one, the people that we choose to be around. Sometimes it, we choose to be around because we like who we are when we're around them right? We like the identity and the role that we play when we're around those people. So those are the people that we choose to be around. I'm also going to go into diet and how diet influences our identity and how diet has been influenced also by our childhood, for some of us, our culture and our religion, um, and how we, how we relate to food and how we, um, relate to, uh, what we like and what we don't like and, what we perpetually eat, you know, people say like, I'm a meat eater, and then they identify as that, or I'm a vegan, and they identify as that, and how much is that identity really them, or has it been influenced by, uh, you know, how they related to food when they were children, and all of that stuff. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening to my thoughts and ideas. Have an awesome weekend, and happy healing. Bye.